In this video, we are going to talk about tangent planes and surface area as they relate to parametric surfaces. Suppose I have a surface and it's represented by this parametric representation, just some generic functions, x and v, which all depend on two parameters, u and v. If I have a point, u naught, v naught, and I fix u at u naught, and let v vary, I'm going to get a function of only one parameter, v, and that's a curve on the surface of this black curve highlighted now in yellow. A curve of a tangent vector at u naught v naught. And the way we would calculate the components of that tangent vector is we would take the partial of r with respect to v, which would be the vector where each component vector is its partial derivative with respect to v evaluated at u naught v naught. And we can do the same idea with uh, fixing u and uh, at u equals u naught and let v vary. Then we have a, oh no, I'm sorry, there was a mistake there. There we go. If we keep v fixed, we're going to let v equal v naught and let u vary. Then we're going to get a different curve on the surface, so this green curve here. And its tangent vector would be r, the partial of r with respect to u, which means we just take the partial derivative with respect to u of each of the three component functions and evaluate it at our point u naught v naught. Now I have both my tangent vectors, I have a point, I can form the cross product of those tangent vectors to get the normal vector, and so now I have enough information. I've got a point on the plane, I've got a normal vector to the plane, I can find the equation of the tangent plane uh, to this surface using its parametric representation. So let's do an example. I have a parametric, parametric representation of this surface here, uh, and we'd like to find an equation of the plane tangent to it at u equals pi over 6 and v equals pi over 6. So the position vector of the corresponding point, so our initial point r naught, when u equals pi over 6 and v equals pi over 6, is the vector with these components here. 1 half radical 3 over 4, 1 half. So if I take the partial of r with respect to u, I'll get well, sine of u minus sine of u sine v, and then 0 in the third component. Evaluate that at pi over 6 and pi over 6. Do the same thing with the partial with respect to v. I'll evaluate that at pi over 6 and pi over 6. And I kind of write these two vectors under each other because I know I'm going to find the cross product. And so kind of a shortcut if I write them under each other is that I just think of this as in my memory aid, thinking of it like a determinant. So I can calculate the cross product as the vector with these components. That it's a little bit messy. I can clean it up a little bit if I factor out the radical 3 over 8. And so I'll take this multiple of the original cross product as my normal vector. So the normal vector will have components negative 1, negative 2 radical 3, and 3. So then I'll take n, I'll dot it with the position vector r naught. That gives me negative one half. So my e equation of the tangent plane is negative x 
minus 2 radical 3y plus 3z equals negative 1 half. Now let's see if we can calculate the area of the portion of the surface using its parametric representation. So we can think of this portion of the surface as, well, the set of position vectors where u and v are in some bounded region in the uv plane, so in our parameter space. So our r is a parametric region in the uv plane. And the parametric representation maps it onto the surface in R3. So here we have a transformation, just like we had with our change of variables. So we're going to do the same analysis that we did with change of variables. The only difference is, is that the result, we don't call it with a nice name like Jacobian. Uh, it's just going to be a relation between the uh, area and so the area differential ds and the area differential da in the uv plane. So how would we go about that? Well, we'll start by putting a mesh on our region in the uv plane. The, each cell in the mesh is going to measure delta u by delta v, well, except for on the, the uh, boundary, but we handle that just like we did with double integrals. Uh, we're going to call r sub ij the cell whose uh, lower left-hand corner is u sub i and v sub j. Again, its length is delta u by delta v. And uh, we're going to call S sub ij the image of rj. So this patch over here on our surface is the image of that cell um, in the uv plane. And we want to get an estimate for the area of that patch. So at that corner here, so the image of uivj, we can find the tangent vectors just like we did before and scale them by the delta u and the delta v. And then the area of this parallelogram is a good estimate for the area of this patch particularly when delta v and delta u are very small. And so that's the parallelogram, I lost a g. That's the parallelogram uh, determined by these two vectors. So delta v times the partial of r with respect to v, delta u times the partial of r with respect to u. And we can find that area by taking the magnitude of the cross product. Now, delta v and delta u are constants, so we can factor those out in front. In fact, they're positive constants. And so we can say uh, that we'll call this delta sij, the little bit of uh, the area of this little patch. And so our surface area could be estimated or approximated by adding up the area of all those little patches. Now, of course, what we'll do is we'll let n and m go to infinity. And in that case, then, uh, our delta sij becomes our area differential ds. And the relationship to the uv plane is that you would take the magnitude of r sub u cross r sub v dA. And if you look back through your notes, you'll see that that's exactly what we did to find the Jacobian. But like I said, this one doesn't have any special notation. We just leave it as the magnitude of r sub u cross r sub v. 
Now, this should remind us of, uh, in curves, the arc length differential ds was found to be the magnitude of r prime of t dt. So then our formula for the uh, area of this portion of the surface is going to be the double integral over the parametric region r of the magnitude of ru cross rv times dA. Let's look at an example. We're going to find the area of the portion of the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared under the plane z equals 9. Now we could actually solve this uh, without using a parametric representation, but we're going to solve it using two different parametric representations to illustrate an important point. So our first uh, representation is just going to use x and y as parameters. z is actually a function of x and y. And so I could just write it using this parameterization. Then we would find, well, the partial of r with respect to x, the partial of r with respect to y. Calculate that cross product. So I wrote these vectors under each other to save a little bit of space. I'll just put my i, j, and k up there, and then treat that like a determinant to calculate the cross product. So I get component functions, then negative 2x, negative 2y, and 1. So the length of that cross product is radical 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 1. The region, now our parameter is space is xy, so we're going to look in the xy plane. The region of integration is, well, we're under the plane z equals 9, so z has to be less than or equal to 9, or x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. So that's a disk centered at the origin with radius 3. And that's just a polar region. So R is a polar region. It's a disk. Makes sense to convert to polar coordinates, in which case I would have dA equaling R dr d theta. So we're converting to polar coordinates. We have a Cartesian integrand. We can see that we have a polar region, which is a disk in our parameter space, x, the xy plane. So we're going to convert to polar just as we would do before. So x squared plus y squared is r squared. Our the dA is r dr d theta. r goes from 0 to 30. Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Let's make a u substitution. Convert the inner integral to u and perform the evaluation. And that just gives us pi over 6 in parentheses 37 radical 37 minus 1. Well, we could use a different parametric representation. We could use, for example, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, which would mean z equals r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta, which is just r squared. So, now I have two r's. One is the vector r and one is the parameter r. So our parametric representation would be the vector r with component functions r cosine theta, r sine theta, and r squared. So I could continue the analysis. Take the partial derivative of the vector r with respect to the parameter r. And I'll get cosine theta, sine theta, and 2r. 
take the partial derivative with respect to theta, I'll get minus r sine theta, r cosine theta, and zero. Now form my cross product. So just put my i, j, and k with their hats above their respective columns. Use my memory aid. And I find that I get the cross product is has components negative 2 r squared cosine theta, negative 2 r squared sine theta, and r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta. So that I can simplify. That's just going to be r. Now let's form the cross product. A little bit more work involved here. Take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. I see I can simplify that because I have 4 r to the fourth as a common factor for cosine squared and sine squared theta. So that would reduce to radical 4r to the power of 4 plus r squared. I have a common factor of r squared, and I could take the radical of each side, or each factor, I'm sorry, the radical of each factor, and that reduces to r outside the radical, inside the radical, 4r squared plus 1. Now let's think about our parametric region. It is in the r theta plane, and r just goes from 0 to 3, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. In fact, I should have included that as part of my description of the parametric representation here. I really should have said up here that r goes between 0 and 3, and theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. This parametric region in the r theta plane is actually a rectangle. It is not a polar region. R and theta here are just simply parameters. I could have used u and v. Maybe that would have been less confusing. But we could have used u and v. We are not going to convert this to polar coordinates. What we have here in our uh, polar, I mean a polar, our parametric description is uh, already using R and theta. I do not have a polar region. I do not have an integrand which would benefit from to converting to another coordinate system. And so we're not converting to polar coordinates. So in this parameter, per, in this parametric region or in this parameter space, my area differential dA is just dr d theta. There's no extra r here. In a way, I've already incorporated that r in my parameterization, but I don't need to put the extra r. And we can see that when I write down the integral now over this parametric region. So I'm going from 0 to 3, 0 to 2 pi, and guess what? That's the same integrand I had with my other parameterization after I convert it to polar. So I'm going to get the same value for the surface area. Now, in solution one of the example that we just worked out, we saw that z was a function of x and y. And so if we looked at the partials, there's a clear pattern here. The partial with respect to x is just 1, 0, and then the partial of f with respect to x. The partial of r with respect to y is 0, 1, and the partial of f with respect to y. So the cross product is always going to have this form. The negative of the partial of f with respect to x, the negative of the partial of f with respect to y, and 1. You always get that formed when z is a function of x and y. And then the resulting cross product uh, will have the magnitude or the, uh, of 
the radical of the partial of f with respect to x squared plus the partial of f with respect to y squared plus 1. And of course, we should recognize this as being the integrand when we were finding the surface area of a uh, function of two variables. So again, this is a formula that is always going to be true if I can write z as a function of f and uh, of f, I'm sorry, z as a function of x and y, which is very common. And so it's a shortcut that's worth remembering.